Transformation Markers with one. On this program, we look at the alternative uh, policy positions of the MDC. Uh, today, joining us is Dr. Tabula Mashakada, the Secretary for Finance and Economic Affairs. Dr. Mashakada, welcome to Transformation Markers. Good afternoon. Thank you. Good afternoon, Zimbabwe. So, we had uh, a monetary policy pronouncement. Was that a monetary policy? I need to correct you. It's not a monetary policy in, the, in its proper or right sense. Because when you talk of a monetary policy, you are talking of a situation where a country has got its own currency and reserving governor, then he uses that currency to address issues like uh, price stability, exchange rate stability, and of course other measures like financial sector regulation. So it's not a monetary policy in its usual sense. But uh, be that as it may, let's treat it as such and, and assume it was a mandatory policy statement. Mm -hmm. uh, but and I want to say that uh, uh, before the statement was pro pronounced on the 1st of October, mm -hmm. people expected uh, a solution to their problems. And one of the biggest challenges is the shortage of money, mm -hmm. the shortage of cash. Mm -hmm and the bank queues, mm -hmm. and people cannot access their money in the bank. So they had hoped that the, the governor was going to address that very critical issue. Uh, but regrettably, uh, he didn't address mm -hmm. the liquidity or cash shortages mm -hmm. in the bank queues. What he did was to address the shortage of foreign currency. And that was the gist of his monetary policy statement. Mm -hmm. He only addressed the shortage of foreign currency. Mm -hmm. And how does he intend to address it? He has opened up an opportunity for banks to open two accounts. Mm -hmm. The first one is called the North F and, and FCA Nostro account. Mm -hmm. What I'll, is that, Nostro? I will explain what that means. Mm -hmm. The Nostro account is an account for foreign payments. Okay? Mm -hmm. So companies and, and individuals mm -hmm. which have got access to Forex can now open a separate account. Mm -hmm. And when they need to make foreign payments, they will apply to the reserve bank through their bank okay. yeah, to use that money to pay school fees or import fuel, uh, import food, and etc. Et okay. So that's one account which is now going to be opened in the banks. Mm -hmm. The other account is the what they call the RTGS FCA, mm -hmm. which is our usual, our usual current and servicing accounts. Okay. Yeah, but these are still denominated in US dollars. So okay. what the Reserve Bank Governor is saying is that the economy is still dollarized, and the US dollar is still the unit of exchange. Okay. Right. And, and he says the, that US dollar is still equal to the bond note, one is to one. Which is a fallacy. Definitely, because one, if you go to the bank, you can't find the money. If you go onto the street, the money is a wash. Yes. You see? And the exchange, and the exchange rate. rate is yeah. terrible. Now, today's rate, it is 120% RTGS mm -hmm. and 80% bond. So it's not one is to one. Yeah. But the governor has not addressed that distortion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he has just kept that. A fallacious arrangement of one is to one. So, so it doesn't so it's, work. It, it exists in theory, it in exists theory, there. And, but and that needed to be addressed, you know, to make sure that the US dollar is given a formal exchange rate vis-a-vis mm -hmm. -vis the bond. 
Yeah, but they don't want to accept that we are using. There is no money in the bank. Oh, yeah. that's, that's the, that's there is the no crisis. money in the bank. People are working, they've got money in their accounts, but they cannot access that money. It's virtual money, it's yeah. in the air. Now, what the fears that the Zimbabweans have, or the public has, is that if yesterday they woke up to have their foreign currency, their accounts raided, mm -hmm. what has changed? This is the same government that raided the most of accounts, that raided the foreign currency accounts of Zimbabweans. Mm. They just woke up one morning with the Zimbabwe dollars, Zim dollar balances in their accounts. So there's no confidence Definitely. that the governor will not raid the, the, those balances to fund critical imports mm. of government. So I don't see how the market can respond. Oh, there's no confidence. But in, 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 in the policy um, in the policy pronouncements, we heard that the economy has improved, that um, you know um, we are growing at a percentage. Uh, I don't I don't understand. Is is there a difference between what government is seeing and what we as ordinary people are seeing on the ground? Because there is. They, they, they say there's a there's a rapid growth that is taking place. So so what that tells you is that there's no compatibility or connection between the government and the people. Mm -hmm. Because the reality is what the suffering the people are experiencing. So for a whole minister or governor to talk about things improving, economy growing, where is it growing? When the manufacturing sector is down mining, prices are low, agriculture mm. is still uh, finding its feet, yeah. tourism here and there, you know. So where is the source of growth? Mm. So it is not right to lie to the people that uh, it's business as usual. It's, it's a business as usual approach which doesn't help uh, the country. They must be realistic and say, these are the challenges that we are facing. 93% unemployment, mm -hmm. inflation of 5%, mm -hmm. price increases, mm -hmm. shortages in the, in the, in the shops. Mm -hmm. You know, those are the issues that are affecting uh, Zimbabweans. And there's nothing to celebrate for, for us to say things have improved. There is no improvement after the elections. Things have gone down, the economy has crashed, and things have gone worse. And now we've got these measures that are being put in place, uh, like the one that you've mentioned, the Nostro FCA and the RTGS FCA account. There is also um, what they are terming credit uh, facilities that they, they are opening up. What are these? Well, uh, what they are saying, like I said, the major thrust of this for this monetary policy mm. is to raise forex or foreign exchange. On the other, on the one hand, he says, Zimbabweans come up, open your foreign currency account. But he says, as government, they are going to, they found out, found out they have uh, looked for 500 million dollars to stabilize those two accounts. In other words, to say whenever you need your money, it's like a surety or a guarantee. That is there. Yeah, that is there. That is what he's telling us. But this is just for the nostril accounts. For the nostril accounts. What about? What about the ordinary person yeah, who, is, who, is, who deposited money into their accounts? That's, 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 that's the real challenge. And we as parliamentarians have not, have not approved any any borrowings. So we cannot vouch that there's that 500 million. We don't know. Which are supposed to come to parliament and say this facility we got from this source this facility from this source in Parliament approves that borrowing in terms of the constitution. So it has not come. To it has come. not to come. So it's, it's, it has not come. So it's not official. So it's premature. So who then it's to do premature. This, uh, monetary policy. We are counting our chickens before they are hatched. Because <laughs> we have not approved that those the nostro, those uh, borrowings for us to authenticate or verify that indeed there is five hundred million. Okay. And, and, and remember, he's talking of 500 million, but the queue for foreign currency mm -hmm. through Nostro accounts mm -hmm. is 6 billion. Sure. That's the backlog, that is the arrears. That is the arrears. So 500 million 
vis a vis the six billion that importers require. What are you doing? It's a drop in the ocean. Yeah, and 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 I think it won't it won't really have an impact that then on the ground. Spikes prices. I mean, we've seen prices going up. You know, I'll take for an example. Some of us uh, we stay in the ghetto. You know, people, children buy freezes. A freezer that was going for five cents now goes for ten cents. Uh, that's a spike in yeah. price. Just the basic things, you know. Across the board. Yeah. And what's happening, Yvonne, is that people are are buying our products from the supermarkets. Mm -hmm. Go out to Mozambique or Zambia, sell them in US dollars. They come here, buy bonds on the black market, and then take the goods again to Mozambique. So there's a shortage. Of course, it's cheap now for those people who can access foreign currency. They just come and buy cheaply from Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. uh, taking advantage of the of the depreciation yeah, of, the, of the bond. Stuff, so they can swipe and, they can, and get and the so things on, about yes, and go, go elsewhere and, and get foreign currency. So it's a distortion. Yes. That's why uh, we as the MDC, mm -hmm. we think that the bond note must be decommissioned because it is distorting the market. I mean, I remember... Um, it's it's I, bad I, I, money chasing good money. It's, it's, it's been on social media, you know, people are saying that um, when the Reserve Bank governor introduced the bond notes, and he said, if it doesn't work out, if these things don't actually uh, stabilize the economy, then I'm going to resign. Here we are, two years later, and the bond is just shown us that it is what the people feared it to be, a policy and money that is just going to chow their money, it's their so real it's a, money. It's basically a surrogate currency, mm -hmm. which is not big by any value, mm -hmm. and therefore, and it's distorting the exchange rate on the power market. And unfortunately, the premium to that is that those who get Forex at such a high rate, mm -hmm. they are going to pass on the cost to the consumer. Definitely. That's why we've got high prices. And uh, given that our economy is highly informalized, you know, people, um, most of our vendors, uh, cross-border traders, you know, they get their goods elsewhere, and the forex is not there. It's not there. Yeah, that's correct. And that translates to a spike in, in prices for the ordinary person who is not crossing the and border. And to make, to make matters worse, they've introduced the tax two dollars per every RTHS transaction uh, that, that you do. Mm -hmm. They charge two dollars. So, okay. But already we are paying VAT. Yeah. Right. So add that two dollars to the uh, VAT that we are already paying. It's, 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 it's outrageous. So VAT will almost be like uh, 16 percent to 17 percent now because of the two dollars charge. Mm -hmm. That they are so it, it, it still comes back, the burden comes back to the on ordinary, the ordinary person. person on the street. Basically. What needs to be done? Honorable Mashagada, I mean, the MDC has spoken about smart policies. Yes. What advice? In our, in our smart document, we, we make it very clear mm -hmm. that we must remove the bond note. Okay. okay. We remove the bond note, um, make sure that we open up the economy, real opening up. Mm -hmm. Not on paper, mm -hmm. real opening up, address the ease of doing business conditions mm -hmm. so that we have foreign foreign investors coming to the country mm -hmm. with new money. What, what Zimbabwe needs is new money. Okay. You've got the diaspora coming mm -hmm. to put new money into the economy. Mm -hmm. For example, imagine what will happen if you give the diasporans the right to vote okay. and your citizenship. Mm -hmm. They can do wonders for this country. They got dual citizenship, they got the right to vote, they can bring in their money mm -hmm. yeah, with confidence. Yeah. These are the measures that things will be implemented in the constitution. So until do away with the bond note, mm -hmm. go back to the multiple currency and bring confidence. How did we do it in 2009? Where was money staying in the banks? What is there? Uh, How do we bring, um, uh, you know, somehow politics has uh, an effect on the economy, and I think we've seen that, you know, where there is the aspect of legitimacy. Is this government what the people voted for? And is that being shown by the economy? Or what exactly needs to be done 
around the issues to do with legitimacy, the issues to, because it seems we are perennially in this season where we are trying to say, yes, Zimbabwe is open for business. What business? You see, the MDC controls the economy. Rather, it's a stakeholder mm -hmm. in, in the performance and the recovery of the economy. You cannot ignore the MDC. Mm -hmm. We had 2.6 million people who believe in us. Mm -hmm. And the market also believe, believes in us. So once that market and 2.6 million are disappointed, there's no confidence. You know? That's how economic, uh, economic markets work. It is based on, it's based on expectation and confidence building. Now, it is up to this government to put in place confidence building measures mm -hmm. in order to restore this economy. At the present moment, sanctions have been put in place because of the behavior of the government. So the government must behave mm -hmm. so that people have confidence in this in the administration. Mm -hmm. And we've had um, President Nelson Chamisa saying that uh, um, IFU, you know, the economy is bad as it were. The monetary policy comes and it uh, virtually addresses nothing. And we've got a government that is saying they want to open up dialogue. And the president has explicitly said then the dialogue has to be clear on who won this election based on truth term. Now here we are. No one is willing to open up that particular dialogue to say who actually won the elections. That dialogue is unavoidable. We have to address the question of legitimacy and also proceed beyond that question of legitimacy to deal with economic and political reforms that we need to, to take place yeah. in a democratic environment mm -hmm. to make sure that the economy, because right now the economy is in the jaws of politics. Yeah. Uh, if you don't address these political fundamentals, mm -hmm. the economy will not recover. That's what we told them even in 2013. Mm -hmm. They are not going anywhere in the political questions. Which are the hard questions. Yeah, the, 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 because the, it's really, yeah, it's really tough. Yeah. It's really they tough. They have to be addressed there. so that the economy is freed from uh, politics and then it starts to perform. The budget deficit is one, one good example. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's a thing which we have to negotiate to say we must bring it down, do our work with the government borrowing. You know, they've borrowed up to now a 2.2 billion mm -hmm. budget. Mm -hmm. uh, Cumulative budget uh, deficit 2.2 billion. Mm -hmm. So they have exceeded the statutory limit of borrowing from the Reserve Bank. So we need to vaccinate that borrowing from the Reserve Bank. And, and we also need to vaccinate the TBs, the Treasury bills, mm -hmm. with their issue not. Yeah. Yes, let's talk about the Treasury bills. Who do they go to and what are they? Well, the Treasury Bill is a government paper, it's a short term government uh, paper. Mm -hmm. uh, which is a, a which is a promise or not? But the government issues the bond to the private sector, mm -hmm. like old mutual NASA, or any private individuals. Mm -hmm. yeah. They just publish, and then you can go and buy the bonds. Okay. Then this mature after a particular period with a coupon rate. Okay. Yeah. But what's happening is that government has been issuing these bonds, uh, which is equal to printing money, generating more money. Yeah. So they take money from the financial sector, they take money from the financial institutions to fund their budget deficit. Now, okay. the private sector, the productive people mm -hmm. no longer have money to borrow because government has mopped out all the money through the paper which they, which they are giving you. Uh, and they are not redeeming that paper, which means they are not paying you the money on maturity. You know, when you're, so speaking, when you're speaking like this, uh, personally, I feel like we're stuck in, in a rut, we are in the mud. Where are we going? We're going in a vicious circle because we're already in the mud. That's why we needed a, a serious economic recovery program. Mm -hmm. As the MDC, we had an emergency rescue plan for this economy. Yes, let's talk about the emergency rescue plan. Yes. What are some of the... The key features of key the emergency features. rescue plan is that yeah. we needed at least 10 billion to attract 10 billion in the short term to deal with the budget, the budget, the budgetary deficit or budget deficit. Mm -hmm. Also to deal with the humanitarian crisis, the health sector, the education sector, and we were right. Look at the cholera outbreak. Mm. It was difficult to contain because 
we didn't have that emergency fund. But in our mind, we were already clear that we needed an re emergency rescue uh, uh, program mm -hmm. to stabilize government finances mm -hmm. before the actual economic uh, blueprint uh, starts to be implemented. Okay. So it's a, it's a lost opportunity. Yeah, because and you we, talk about a hundred billion dollar economy. Yes. Let's talk about that. Yeah, we're going now to look at the major pillars of the economy mm -hmm. right, and attract the necessary foreign investment. The mining sector, mm -hmm. it requires about six billion to recover. The manufacturing sector requires about four billion to recover. Mm -hmm. So, And by recovering, we're talking about what? Getting well, it back to a point where it was functioning or actually growing? Well, the, the best period for, for this country was 97, 98. Mm -hmm. That's when the economy was at its peak. Okay. So if we can start from there and surpass, mm -hmm. we'll, be, we'll be creating jobs. Okay. The problem is that we're not creating any new jobs because the economy has been highly informalized. Mm -hmm. And we're not able to tax the informal sector. So the government revenue is weak. The, the revenue base is weak. Okay. That's the problem. So to increase our revenue base, that means uh, injecting into these industries that you yeah, talked about. Yeah, more capital, but it all depends on confidence again. Mm -hmm. It's confidence, confidence, confidence for us to invest in these uh, productive sectors. Wow. Um, is there anything else, uh, Doctor, that you feel um, we can talk about? Yeah, this economy has got so many crises, mm -hmm. but a crisis of capital. We can attract enough capital, whether in the form of uh, loans or in the form of uh, credit lines, uh, to increase the supply of the United States dollar. Uh, diaspora remittances, we are receiving about two billion a year in terms of uh, diaspora remittances. Mm -hmm. uh, foreign missions and embassies are also bringing some new money to the country. Mm -hmm. uh, that's all. But the problem is that we've got a debt burden, which we have to resolve. If we don't resolve the debt problem, mm -hmm. we cannot get new money. Because take, people take a cue from our creditors, yeah. especially multilateral uh, institutions like IMF, World Bank, African Development Bank. If mm -hmm. we don't have peace with these institutions, mm -hmm. no new money can come in. I, I remember during the period of 2009 to 2013, you were the Minister of Economic Affairs, and um, on to IBT was the Minister of Finance. Yes. And the one thing that he always spoke about when he presented his budget was we cannot eat what we are not producing. And at the moment, my fear, the fear of Zimbabweans, is that we are eating more than we, we are more of a consumption consuming you know economy we are more than a productive economy. than a productive economy that's the problem if you look at the capacity uh, utilization in the, in the productive sectors mm -hmm. it has fallen down to 40 percent so it means we are producing at 40 percent of our normal capacity because we don't have raw materials and we were not even at 100 yes mm -hmm. we don't have raw materials we don't have we are queuing for the foreign currency mm -hmm. to import uh, intermediate goods. Mm -hmm. So it's a very tricky situation. Yes. All because of legitimacy. If people had uh, realized that let's respect the will of the people, mm -hmm. I don't think uh, we will be in such a mess as we are in. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Yvonne. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Coming to the I think Zimbabweans, uh, you've been enlightened. There are a number of issues that came out in the monetary policy that was announced and those issues are not addressing the fundamentals, the cash crisis, the issue of pricing going up, the issue of stability in our country. So what money do we have? Do we even have the money? If I'm going to be taxed two dollars per every transaction that I make, what am I going to be left with given that already there is another that, that they take? So taxation has increased on the people and that is a big challenge. Uh, Dr. Mashakada, before you go, taxation. There is a bed that has been placed on there. Yes, it's, it's regressive because it attacks the ordinary person. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the richer people? Why? For access to current, foreign currency, they're sitting pretty. And corruption. Mm -hmm. Corruption. Is Let's deep. talk about corruption. Yeah. 
how do you as a, as the MDC intend to vaccinate this country from this disease called um, corruption in this part of food? Well, corruption is a cancer in the society. And corruption, corruption is both in the private and the public sector. Mm -hmm. And in the, in the main, the corruption that is detrimental to this country is twofold. Mm -hmm. First corruption is when you pledge your resources like to China, they take the resources, they take the resources without giving in anything back, yeah. which is tangible. That's corruption. Mm -hmm. And it is the chefs or the politicians which get the money. Mm -hmm. right? Using the resources which belong to the public. Mm -hmm. That's a form of corruption. The second form of corruption is the public procurement system. Mm -hmm. They give tenders to people who are not capable of delivering services. Mm -hmm. I mean, you and I have read in the media, yeah. people who got monies uh, into millions of dollars, but they didn't supply them with the product they were like this. That's corruption. Yeah. The biggest corruption that we have had is the opaqueness in the, in the diamond sector. I mean, we lost $15 billion. I mean, you can say that. So, <laughs> That's corruption. Where is the money going? Where is the 15 billion going? Mm. So when you talk of corruption... And maybe 15 billion is just what we know. Yeah. What just went into the yes. media. So when you talk of corruption, you have to understand what is the, at the core of the economy. What is economic sabotage? Mm. Not the little uh, fraud cases of uh, people who are trying to make ends meet. That's, that's chicken change. Yes. We talk of huge corruption mm. peddled by those people who have got access to political power and who are in the corridors of power. And that has to be vaccinated. And for MDC, for, for, for people must declare their assets, mm. right? So that you can then account on your, the growth in your personal asset portfolio. Mm. Where did you get these things? But that's not happening. No. You know, there was this halabaloo about uh, publishing a list of people who externalized funds. Mm -hmm. What did you and I see? Nothing. And, nothing. And, and they were given a month to bring back the money. Yeah, nothing, no, nothing happened. Yeah. So uh, I think the system is not yet ready to tackle corruption head on. All right. All right. Thank you so much, Honorable Thank Mashakada. you once more. Once May again. God bless you for coming you. onto the program. And Zimbabwe, there you have it. That's what we have. And that's where we are going. How long can we survive? Is 2023 an option? You tell us. Join us again on our next program as we tackle another issue that you, um, you, that you have. So if you want to get in touch with us, please do get all of us on MDC Zimbabwe Facebook page. Also send us an email on info at mdc.co.zw and do get hold of us on all those platforms and share with us the things that you want to hear on this program. I'm Yvonne and I'm signing out.